Good day and welcome to our explanation and demonstration of how to use OneDrive, specifically your Office 365 account, to share files and folders with others inside and outside of your company. I'd like to interject for just 10 seconds and ask you to click like if you found this video useful. Our site is dedicated to explaining technology in simple ways and providing cookbook answers for technical problems. We spend a lot of time on Windows 10 and Windows Server. We spend a lot of time on Azure, Office 365, but mostly our products are about how to's. Lots and lots of cookbooks like how to uninstall something when it's stuck. If you would click subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. Thanks for your help and back to the show. Now, everything we're about to show you is based on the premise that you already have OneDrive set up. Let's very quickly go over that to make sure that you have the basics in place. Uh, if you uh, don't see a little cloud icon at the bottom here, click the carrot at the bottom right and then right click on the cloud and go up to settings. Then from settings, click on backup and select manage backup. These are the folders that are already being copied and synced to your OneDrive account. If you don't have OneDrive set up, not a problem. All you do is click start, type in OneDrive, make sure it's the OneDrive app, click on it and it'll run you through as a setup wizard. Once that's done, yet again, go back, right click on the OneDrive cloud icon, select settings, and make sure that your backup is functioning as you see here. If you have a specific file, say this one, that you want to share with somebody, you can simply right click on it and select share. Or you can go into Outlook, create a new message, address it to whoever you want, and then select attach file. And you'll notice something odd about uh, some of these files. Some of them have a little cloud icon. That means those are files that are stored in your OneDrive. So if I click on it, it comes up and it says, well, do you want to share a link or do you want to attach an actual copy of it? So a copy is what you're used to doing. That's what people used to do up until last year or so. <laughs> uh, so if you were working on a document together, you'd have 5,000 copies of floating around, everybody with their own version. What a pain. If you send share link, they receive a link to the file in your OneDrive. So let's click on that and you'll see it's sharing it. There it is. And it says anybody can edit and you can say, well, I'm not really happy with that. I want to change the permissions. So anybody in the organization can edit or uh, anybody, or let's change it to anybody can view so they can't actually edit it. Now at this point, if I sent it off, the recipient would, would get an email with a link to this file and they could work on it. Now, instead of taking up your time demonstrating that, we're going to show you the other sharing methods and of course the result will be the same. So we'll save you the time of watching it twice. So I'll close this and let's show you the much more interesting way to handle file shares in a small office or a home office or any small medium business for that matter. The easiest thing to do is to either take an existing folder or just create a new one. So I'll, in my case, I'll create a new one, but it doesn't have to be. And I could say, uh, Let's say my company was called Talent Era. Talent Era. Office Files. There we go, right? So I've created a folder here called Talent Era Office Files. And I want to share a bunch of stuff. And as, as I said, this could be an existing folder with stuff already in it. It just isn't in my case, but it could be. So let's take a bunch of things here. And uh, I actually want to keep these. So I'm just going to copy these in. I'm going to right click and just copy these in. Uh, is there anything else? Yeah, let's take this file here as well and copy it in. There it is. So there, I've got these three files and uh, no, that's not enough. I want to create a folder called, um, let's take our files. I can, I can start working on this and just everything will be fine. But if I want to share it with somebody, I can right click and I can select share. Let's send this to a test account that I have called Ian Test 2021. Oops. At Outlook.com. There it is. And I will click send and let's see what they get. We're going to go through this a couple of times so you understand it. So don't worry about me glossing things over because I haven't. We're going to get through it. You'll see that I have a lovely message that Ian Matthews has sent me. 
And by the way, my name is Jan Matthews in this fake email account. You'll notice here it says that uh, Ian Matthews has shared this Talentera office files with you and that anybody can share this link. So this is quite dangerous. If it's left this way, someone could forward this email to anybody else, the media, your competition, whoever, and they'd have uh, full access to it, including uh, editing. So let's, uh, that's, that's just not good. But anyway, let's leave that for the moment because we will cover it in just a few seconds here. Let's click open. And there's that folder. You'll recognize it, it's the same, right? So um, let's uh, go into a test document here. There it is. And let's go into the test document here at the same time. And uh, let's uh, clean this up a bit so it's just easier to see. There we go. So I can go into here and you can see at the top right, it shows who's editing. So this is real Ian, and you'll see that it's got this guest contributor is logged in. Now, what's important here is that if this was a staffer in your office, it would actually have their name. For instance, the person at the other end, the fake Ian in this case, right? My little test account shows that Ian Matthews is editing. And that's the real Ian Matthews over here. And let's just show you what that looks like. So I can go into here and you can see that, oh, guest contributors typing here. Okay. so. To avoid conflicts, I can't type in that same paragraph, but um, I can go into here and I can type, this is looking very real to me. And you can see it's almost real time. Now uh, I can go back as the uh, this other person and I can type in, I would agree. Okay, and you can see we can both edit at the same time. It goes both ways. Well, the only thing I've noticed that seems to have a lag is this. If I go into, if I add a graphic, so I'll click insert picture, uh, let's use a stock image just for fun. And let's use um, uh, this one, All right? I'll just select insert. You'll notice it doesn't seem to show up right away. I'll resize it. Um, and you think, well, it's a picture. It's gonna take a second. Yeah, okay, fair enough. But it, it just seems to have much more of a lag, that's to be expected, but I've seen it take a lag as long as a minute, which is a bit unnerving. So if you're working with graphics, just be prepared for that, that it might be a bit more of a lag. Okay, so let's move on from this and show you how to make this more secure so it's more realistic. Close this document, there it is. And if I waited, this IM would go away. It'll take, oh, a few seconds to actually uh, realize that it's closed and flush it, but I'm just going to close this anyway. Something to note here is back on the original machines. So let's uh, stay focused here so we don't get confused. On my actual office computer, you'll notice now that there's a little head. And that means that there is somebody else that's been working on this document. The green check marks, well, the green circle with the uh, check marks indicate that it is synced and current. So let's show you how to handle the security on this properly. The first thing we want to do is revoke that link that we sent out. So how do you do that? Well, it's not very hard, just but it's, it's far from obvious. Get into your OneDrive and do it there. It's not hard to do, but it's not obvious, as I said. The easiest way to do that is to right click on the folder in question, select View Online, and it'll just take you straight to it. Now, I'm just going to go back a step because I want to modify the entire folder. So there it is. So I can click on the three dots at the end of the uh, folder name here, and I can select Manage Access, or details. Just for the sake of argument, I'm going to go to details first. And you will see here, this is all, this is the audit trail. This is what's happened. I edited, you edited, she edited, he edited, whatever. And I can select manage access. And that's the same thing as going over here and selecting manage access. Now in here, if I want to revoke this link, what I do is I click the ellipse here and I press the X to remove the link and it says, hey, anybody that's using this link is gonna get hosed. Okay, let's, uh, just before I do that, let's open that file up again as my fake test person. So there, let's, uh, let's just do this simultaneously so you can see what happens. So let's say I'm in here and I'm working on this document. And I'm gonna uh, select delete link I'm working away. And now that all stays functional right up until I close it. Now, when I try to get back into it, it says access denied. Oops, not good. 
In fact, if I refresh this folder, I can't even see it now. <laughs> so that's how you revoke that permission. If I go back to my Outlook on my test account and I try to reopen that folder, it's going to just give me exactly the same thing. So this message is now garbage. Let me delete that. All right, so let's go back and set up the security properly rather than the anybody can edit. So let's show you a couple of uh, edge cases that might be helpful, setting up a password, expiration, things like that. So let's right click and go to share. And we'll do this again quite quickly. I'll type in uh, the same, there it is. And I can say this is read only for ya. <laughs> okay, so we can do it terribly. We can change this to uh, not allow editing and we can set an expiration date of Tuesday and I can set a password of public password. Uh, it doesn't make a difference what I said, right? So I'll set a password there and uh, click apply. Now, I'm not going to bother to go through this because trust me, it's just going to go to a read only file, right? So it's going to open up and they won't be able to edit it. So there's not much else there. As far as the expiration goes, yep, that's definitely a good thing. As far as the password goes, it's a great idea in theory, but practically speaking, if somebody's willing to share this link with a, a competitor or the media or whoever else, they're probably also willing to share the password. It doesn't provide much security that way. All right, so what can you do to lock this folder or any of the files down like you would in a regular office? Well, there's really two more things to consider. Uh, the first is to share it with a specific person. So let me just show you that. We'll just right click on the folder. We'll go to share. And instead of selecting anybody can edit, we'll change it to specific people. And we'll, uh, well, this time we'll turn editing off just for fun, right? Just to show you that uh, read only. Go into here and I'll put uh, that same person. Now this could be somebody inside the company or outside. It doesn't make any difference. And I'll click send. And of course, Jan will receive, there it is, the message shortly it's saying it's been, there it is. This link works only for you. Um, I, I will open it just to quickly to show you that it's read only. Okay, so we have a secure link to verify that we're, we, we're, we're us. We need to go through this send code go so now I go back to my email I'll refresh this because they don't want to wait Not there oh it's another yeah I'm sorry I really hate this focused inbox thing I could turn it off uh, but this is just temporary accounts I don't really care anyway there it is there's the code I'm going to copy and paste it because I'm never going to type that right I'm going to grab that too there we go let's go back paste that link in or that keep you signed in sure And now I can see the file, um, but you notice you can't edit, read only. Okay, so congratulations, you now know what a read only file looks like. Here's the catch, I can still download it, right? So I could still send this off to people, I could take screenshots of it, I could use my camera to you know, photograph it, enough said. The last thing to do with OneDrive in particular is to right click on the folder select share and see what the shares are. So you click at the top right hand corner and select manage access. And here is where you can edit it. So that first link was sent to anybody can edit and I can now click on that link and I can select uh, the X to remove it. However, I cannot change it to uh, from edit only. I could set an expiration. Uh, that's a nice feature. Now, if it's from somebody inside the company like this link is, I can click on it I can remove the link and I can also change it from editing to viewing. So basically the only additional security that you get by dealing with somebody inside your company rather than somebody outside your company, somebody that doesn't have an email address from your organization, is that you can change that permission. But that's a pretty minor difference. If you need granular access, so you need to set special permissions, you know, that type of thing, you're going to have to use OneDrive's big brother, which is called Azure File Storage. And uh, Azure Storage is uh, something I've used successfully in a few companies. Uh, it really works well with syncing to existing on-premise uh, servers, which has a whole pile of advantages, which are beyond the scope of this conversation. So the moral of the story is that, yes, you can use OneDrive 
to share files and folders with people inside and outside the company. But if you don't trust them, well, you shouldn't give them access. But I have spoken with people that think that Azure and OneDrive provide some sort of magical level of security. Remember, the cloud is just a computer that somebody else owns. And while Microsoft will keep your files safer, then you can keep them in your own office. They won't stop you from sharing files outside. It can't stop somebody from taking a photograph of whatever's on their screen or getting around protections in other ways, as we've demonstrated. If you found this video useful, please click like. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. And if you like this type of thing, please click subscribe. That also really helps with the Google algorithm. We spend a lot of time going over cookbooks, you know, how to do things in detail, step by step for Office 365, Azure, Windows Server, win lots and lots of Windows 10, lots of WordPress, lots of web stuff. Again, that really helps us with Google algorithm when you click like or subscribe. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section. We'd love to get back to you. We'll get back to you fairly quickly and also other people will help as well. You can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca as you can see here. Thanks for your time.